it your name? Um, I'm Alpha. Alpha? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm new. This is my first sat some with you. So I'm sorry if it's been addressed already. Um, but I have a question about, I guess, about purpose and life path and direction. Um, I myself am at a point in my life where I feel as though I have quite a blank canvas to create or surrender to a, a life path. And I was just wondering what your ideas and views were on whether we have a calling or a purpose or what can guide us and direct us to live a life that's fulfilling and in the best interest of ourselves and of the world and those around us. Well, very, very technically seen, there is no need for a purpose for this life. Mm -hmm. You just can live and listen to the grass grow. Sure. That is the fundamental thing we have to accept. The maximum purpose that we actually should have is to, to feed this body and listen to the grass grow. Having accepted that in deep surrender, we can speak about how purpose emerges. And the thing is that when you live your life in the awareness that your actions come either from ego or from truth, so it's very simple actually, and you try to distinguish between the two and try to go with the truth, you try to listen, okay, what is this? Hmm, what is this thing called truth actually? Okay, let me see, do I feel... Do I feel my soul? Do I feel this so-called antaratman? Do I actually... Can I pierce beyond the barrier of fear that I have inherited through my Abrahamic inheritance and pierce beyond that barrier of fear and guilt and anger and all of that and actually feel the soul? When I do that, when I start to feel the soul, am I able to go with the impulse of the soul rather than the the demands of the ego. If I'm able to do that and in surrender, gradually the purpose will emerge. It will emerge. And we've seen this quite interestingly, experimentally, amongst those students who have taken up the sadhana very seriously as a real practice, who have, as the first step, simply taught themselves to go further and further into surrender. And as that process has deepened, what has emerged is the, is the purpose. Like it's amazing how that happens. When you say you're an empty page in a sense, or a canvas on which anything can be painted, that's the perfect moment to take up that practice of... How do I recognize what's coming from the soul and what perhaps... How do I differentiate between what you speak of and my ego or my conditioning? Because yeah, I feel like I kind of have an understanding of, of what I've been conditioned to want and what my I feel like my heart wants. My ideology is more like following my passion and my joy. Um, and going that way, is that something that is a, a, a soul? See, the soul, Alpha, the soul doesn't want anything. The soul has no intent or will. So when you say, my soul wants to go on a holiday to Jamaica, it's not the soul. It could be that the soul says, it's okay to do it. but. The soul doesn't want anything. It is not a yearning, hoping, wishing, wanting thing. That is the... actually the... the yearning of the ego. The soul is a quiet entity. It's separate from this system and it impulses. So if you want to know, you have to ask the question, should I go on a holiday to Jamaica? Yes. <laughs> That's the answer you'll get. At least I will certainly get that answer. <laughs> but it might very well be that it's a no, and then I have to bend down to it, okay. No is no. So, Sit down and write, okay. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of like almost 
posing it, a question and exactly. listening to a intuitive. That is the very, very tough aspect of this sadhana because it's not this, this romantic thing about sitting back and detaching yourself from your, from your desires or from your pain or saying, I am not that. And in that moment you feel elated and free, but it is a ego elation because that which is created by this system belongs to this system until it's transformed. Mm -hmm. So it's really a tough sadhana to actually sit there and say, okay, I, I, I want to do this now, is this an impulse from the soul? Is it, does it even feel like a truth impulse or is it an ego impulse? And in the beginning it's going to be difficult to discern because every sadhana that is taking you into that kind of Self-Realization will be, will be challenging. It's taken the ego so many years to make its presence, you know, to nicely become healthy and fat and sit there. How is one supposed to battle that unless that surrender is deepened every day, every moment. But the most important thing I feel is to know that anyhow, up until now, until you knew this, you were anyway doing what you had to do. So even if you make a mistake, it's still not going to be any much different from what has been till now. But if you start to feel the soul and move from it, then imagine, how that master of your being, that the antar guru, the, the inner master, the inner guru is impulsing you into action. Imagine the joy that comes out of that because as a child you knew it already. You knew that as a child when ego had not yet built up. What was making that child do what it did? It's that impulse, it's that. It's the impulse of truth. And as the child grows, that impulse of truth is increasingly obscured. So it's a matter of surrendering, surrendering, surrendering. But being present, not trying to detach yourself from what life is throwing up. Okay. Thank you so much. Just keep practicing it little bit, little bit, little bit and one day that purpose will start to emerge. It will emerge if you practice the surrender, like it has to emerge.